Okay, so right here we have a simple setup that is supposed to emulate a Pokemon battle. We've got two little monsters here. One is supposed to be a fire type, the other is a grass type. Uh, but at the moment, the typings don't do anything yet. So if I attack with this button, we can see it deals 10 damage. It deals 10 damage every time because there's no min-max programs in. And this button deals 3 damage to this Pokemon. Both of them have this uh, monster script here, which has their HP, a attack value, and a defense value. And when we attack, we simply subtract the defense from one out of the attack from the other, and then the result of that is going to get subtracted from their HP. Very, very simple. So this is what the monster class looks like. I've got a very easy display HP class. We don't really care about that for functionality purposes. And over here, we've got a static class called combat, which deals with the damage calculation. So when we attack, we pick our target and their HP is going to get subtracted by our combat damage calculation. And then we put in uh, this monster script and our target monster script, which will then take the attack and defense values out of that and return a float. So that's basically how the system works right now. But you want to be able to have certain typings be super effective against other typings or not very effective because we're making a monster collection game. We're making a Pokemon clone, right? Well, to start that off with, uh, we're going to need to make a variable that can hold the type of a Pokemon. So for now, we're going to uh, just in this static class. If you don't know what a static class is, uh, it's pretty much a class that can be accessed from any other class without needing an object reference. So above that class in this script file, uh, just to keep things organized, I'm going to create a public enum and I'm going to call that type putting in two uh, brackets here. Here we can type in whatever amount of types we uh, want to be able to have. So uh, let's say we want to have a grass type and a fire type and a water type and a steel type and a ghost type and so on and so forth. You separate them with commas. Now we've made our own variable type and since it's public, we can use it in different scripts. So in our monster, we're going to add a new variable here, and that's going to be a public type. And we're going to call that a uh, monster type. Then when we come back to our uh, Pokemon placeholders here, we suddenly have a drop-down menu for a monster type variable. So this red one is going to be our fire type, and this green one is going to be our grass type. Then back in our static class, we're going to make a new function. This doesn't need to be a public function, uh, but it does need to be static because it's part of a static class. So we're going to make a static float function, and we're going to call that get type effective. And that's going to need two parameters, and that is the type of the attacking Pokemon and the type of the defending Pokemon. And we're going to be using uh, a dictionary to figure out the matchup between the attacking and the defending Pokemon, even though I apparently can't spell defending. So the dictionary is going to hold, in theory, every single combination of type matchups that we could have. Then we're going to use that to automatically only put in everything that isn't just neutral damage because that would get really tedious very, very quickly. So the way we do that is we start by saying dictionary, and then the dictionary is going to need a key and a value. The key is going to be type number one, and then the value is actually going to be another dictionary, which might sound a little confusing, but bear with me here. And that dictionary is going to also have a type as its key, and then a float as its value. We'll call this dictionary the multiplier, and we'll set that equal to a new dictionary of, uh, yeah, exactly uh, the same types as we did before. And instead of a semicolon, we're actually going to put in uh, two brackets. So let's go over what this actually is, because this nesting of dictionaries might seem very intimidating and very like scary and weird. 
it's not that bad. So what we're doing is we're making a dictionary for every type that we have. In that dictionary, we're housing a different dictionary with a second type. So let's give this a example. In grass type, we have a different dictionary with every single other type and the type matchup that that is. So this could hold grass, and then this could hold fire, and this would hold 0 0.5. But if the second type isn't fire, which grass is not very effective against, but something like water, this would certainly then have a value of 2. So we're going to need to make all of these dictionaries, uh, which is relatively easy to do by just putting in these brackets, and then we start by typing our type, dot, and then we have all the types that we have created, so let's just go uh, top to bottom, fire, then we put in a comma, and then we create a new dictionary with a type and a float, and that with two brackets, and then we just put a comma, and we move on to the next line. And there we can more or less just like copy paste this entire line, and just change this fire to, for instance, water, and then we can copy and paste it again to make it for grass. I think we also had a steel, and I think ghost was the last one we made for this example. We're not gonna use all of these, but it's just to show you. And then the last one doesn't need a comma after it. Then at the very end of these two brackets, we put in a semicolon because that's the end of creating this dictionary. So we're creating a dictionary within a dictionary. <laughs> Now, after that, we're going to make a for each loop, and we're going to check for each type attacking in our multipliers dictionary that we've made, the top one that's holding all of the type combinations, and we're going to be looking through all of its keys. And in that for each loop, we're going to, again, go in a for each loop because we've got a dictionary in a dictionary that we need to check. Then we check for each type defending in multiplier.keys. We simply check if we don't have our multiplier attacks contains key for defense. So this will just fill in everything that is neutral damage. Then we'll just fill in our multiplier attack and defense key as one. So this first for each loop will go through all of the entries in this first dictionary. And for every entry in this first dictionary, which is water, fire, grass, steel, and ghost, it will then go through the second dictionary, which is the second for each loop, and check whether or not we have created this key. If we have not created this key, it will set this value to being one. So now all we have to do is in between the creation of the dictionary and these two for each loops, we can make a comment here for super effective and a comment for not very effective. And now we can just set values that we care about manually uh, in our multiplier dictionary. So we can say uh, our multiplier for our type, let's say fire when it's attacking a type that is uh, grass, is going to be equal to two. And from here, you just copy and paste this a couple of times and change out the typings into what you want. So if a grass type is attacking a water type, or if a fire type is attacking a steel type, you probably want to order this a little bit better than I have it right now, to be honest. But you get the point. So that will set all of those to two. And then under this not very effective comment, we can do it the other way around. So if fire is attacking water, that's not very effective. So we set it to 0 0.5 with a F so that the engine knows that we're talking about a float. And the same thing here goes for, uh, I don't know, grass against fire is not super effective and so on and so forth. This way we only have to manually give value to the things we care about and everything else, again, is going to not contain a key. And if it doesn't contain a key, it's going to automatically get set to being a value of one. Then after the end of those four each loops, we're going to return the result of our multiplier dictionary with our 
attacking type and our defending type. Then we can just use this type effectiveness in our damage calculation to multiply the results of this. So attack minus defense multiplied by get type effectiveness. And for the parameters, we can just get our attacker.monster type and our defender.monster type. And now that we're back in Unity, this is a fire type and this is a grass type. This was doing 10 damage before. So in theory, when I click on this button, it will now do 20 damage. And it does. And the other way around, it was doing three damage. So now it does one and a half. Well, it's only showing whole numbers, but it actually is calculating half uh, numbers. So let's open up this. We've got uh, 75 HP, as you can see. When I attack, that goes down to 73 and a half. So the type matchup system works flawlessly. Wrapping your head around, putting a dictionary in a dictionary might be a little bit annoying to deal with if you're not used to working with dictionaries but this in my experience is the most straightforward way and the most easily scalable way if you have more than like a couple of types so if you're still a little bit lost and you want to check around in my projects and just like play around with my uh, code as i have it here there is a link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can download this full project to look around in and just see how it works and, and maybe mess around with it a little bit yourself to hopefully understand it a little bit better going forward. Again, if you would like to see me make a more robust, basic Pokemon battle system, do leave a comment down below about that as well, because as of right now, I just wanted to make this tutorial about the type matchup system because that's probably the most complex thing in pokemon damage calculation but i'm more than happy to make a full tutorial series on how to make a pokemon battle system in general so i'll be back in the next tutorial until then see you later and thanks to my patrons you can see them on screen right now and a special thank you to my cave digger tier patreon syntax